I tried to be impartial and cool about this and not get it. Man, fuck that, man. Fuck Tory Lanez, okay? And I don't care if this go viral or none of that shit. I'm from Houston, and if somebody would have done something to Megan in this city, we would have rolled. Megan in L.A. by herself. It's just her T. Ferris. She ain't got a mama no more. Her mama is gone. Her daddy is gone. Her grandmother is gone. All the people that loved her and cared about her unconditionally, that looked out for her and would have protected her, ain't there. So as an OG in Houston, I'm standing up. Tory Lane did some whole ass shit. Period. Yeah, I, I know Tory. I know his manager. I know all of them, man. Fuck all that, though. Fuck all that. If the man on drugs, get him some goddamn rehab. If the man got mental health issues, get him some therapy. But you're not just going to sit here and shoot this girl. And we not say nothing. This shit not real. This, I mean, this is not real nigga shit. It's not. Anytime a man hurts a woman, that's obsession. That ain't love. That's obsession. And he had no reason to shoot this girl. She want to get out the car. Get out the car. You get into it with your gal, she mad, I'm a, let me out. Pull the fuck over. Because whatever you got to deal with with that, it's going to be better than if you don't do that and you try to restrain a woman and then shit get physical. Because if she ready to get out the car and you don't let her get out the car, she going to get physical with you. And she got a right to. But when nobody's talking about it because it's a black woman. Y'all can say what y'all want. I'm just, just, that's just what it is. If Benji... The twin from Good Charlotte had put his hands on Cameron Diaz or somebody. If some, what, you let one of these actors or somebody that fuck with one of these these white women in Hollywood put they put your hands on Alyssa Milano and see what happens. Put your hands on Lady Gaga and see how quick they lock your ass up. We love Megan Hill. We brag about Megan. Everybody want to talk about that. Nobody's saying nothing when she gets shot. No, we got memes. We got jokes. We got all that shit. That shit's supposed to be on. The 530 National News. I'm in Houston. They ain't even, I don't think they ever talked about it on local news here. That's a Houstonian. And yeah, she did. And, and, and God bless all the black women. Because black women be knowing black men be in the wrong. And they still stand up for black men. Why? Because they know what white people do to black men. This is why black women are so hesitant to speak up for uh, to speak against black men because she know black women know how the legal system will treat black men. They know how white America will treat black men when they do something wrong. And black women bite their tongue behind the shit that we do. They've done it for centuries. They put themselves in front of us constantly. You look at any civil rights movement. You look at any, you look at segregation, Jim Crow, civil rights, everything. Black women on the front line. Black women on the front line. She wasn't just scared. She wasn't just scared for herself because she's in a position now where she know that he can't touch her no more. She was scared of what was going to happen to him. If you go back and look at that live, you'll see it. She was worried about what would happen to him. She didn't want him to lose his career because it's so hard for black men to get that kind of employment, to make that kind of, of money in America. She know how hard it is for a black man to be successful in his America, to beat the conditions that hold us down in America. That's why that girl didn't go to the police. She tried to cover for him at his worst, at his lowest. How many of y'all know, don't know a black woman that done that for their man, their brother, their cousin, their daddy, their nephew, their neighbor? Black women have been protecting black men since the beginning of time. Now somebody said, I don't know a black woman alive who hasn't at some point right or wrong protected a black man. I know too many. I'm married to one. Only reason I'm not dead now is because my wife put herself in front of the gun and tried to stall a nigga out that came in our house long enough for, to get me the pistol. And God is my witness. My wife said, all I know is if he would have killed me, you would have still had a chance to get the gun and kill him. Now, what kind of shit is that? I'm doing all this because this is just what needs to be said right now.
And if there's going to be some ramifications between my, behind my statements, let the OG take that. What the fuck you call yourself an OG for if you ain't on the front line looking out for people? So you guys just heard what Bun B had to say about this Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez situation. As most of you know, Tory Lanez shot Megan Thee Stallion in both of her feet. And I had originally recorded a short video about this. And right before I got the chance to edit it, you guys sent me this video from Bun B. And people have finally been defending Megan. So I decided to record an updated video and just talk about what I've been seeing over the last few weeks since this has happened. So what Bun B said about Megan the Stallion and black women in general covering for black men because we fear what the police will do to them and because we know how they are treated by the system of white supremacy even when they are wrong even when they are harming black women that was spot on it's what I have said on my channel it's what other black women online have said and the fact that he came online and said this it shows that there is still a problem and there is a huge imbalance in terms of black men protecting black women versus black women doing everything they can to protect black men. And it also shows that even though black men pretend that they don't know that black women do this for them, they know. They'll lie and say there isn't this one-sided dynamic when it comes to how we really ride for black men versus how they ride for us. But they know, ladies. They're not stupid. They know. And when I heard him talk about how his own wife was willing to lose her life for him, it really made me think of of what Kendall St. Charles has been saying all along about black women making themselves the sacrifice for black men in the black community. And I know there will be black men who say, oh, it's not all black men. Y'all only care about the Pookies and Ray Rays. Black men go to jail over black women all the time. And listen, I have definitely seen that happen. But when it comes to protecting complete strangers, black women will defend black men they don't even know much quicker than black men will defend black women and they don't know and that's really not debatable because let's be honest outside of Bun B and a handful of other black men who finally came out to defend Megan and mind you it's been weeks after the situation happened aside from those men Black men have either been extremely quiet about this situation or they have been defending Tory Lanez. And this is what I'm talking about, ladies, when I say that black men usually stay on code with other black men. Black women, we don't stay on code with other black women. And I'm realizing that a critical mass of black women will probably never get on code. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. In situations like this, if a black man doesn't like a black male celebrity or doesn't agree with what he did, he just doesn't say anything. And if he does say something, he is usually on the side of the man. It doesn't matter if that man is perfect or not. He can be from any walk of life. He can be a Pookie or Ray Ray. He can be a professional. He can be whatever type of black man. He is going to defend that black man. And notice, the, the so-called, you know, good guys, the good black men, they're defending Tory. But when black women have babies with men like Tory, it's a problem. But they will cape for these very same men and then turn around and tell us, oh, you need to separate groups of black men. Why would we do that if every time the, the quote unquote bad black men do something wrong, the good black men will jump in with their capes on? And I keep seeing black men say, oh, Megan is a hood rat. She probably provoked him or she should have chose better. OK. And by that logic, Tory is a street dude. He's a hood rat, too. So why defend him? This is a typical hood rat struggle love type relationship. This happens all the time in the hood. Why are the so-called good black men defending Pookies and Ray Rays that they hate so much? And what really doesn't make sense about this is that when black male criminals rob people, then get shot by the police, you don't see a lot of black men saying, oh, he's a Pookie. His poor decisions is what ultimately got him in that situation. What did he do to provoke the officer? No, they just focus on the fact that the shooting was not justified and rightfully so. But with black women, they're going to bring up every bad decision that she made and they're going to tie it to why she got shot. And, you know, they're going to throw in some ad hominems to, oh, she looked like a man, whatever they can grab at to insult this woman and discredit her. That is what they're going to do. Oh, well, what did she do to, to make him shoot her? And it's not just black men who are doing it, by the way. Black women are questioning her, too. And they're doing this to other black women as well. Black women, we hardly ever question a black man's past. But with Megan... 
A lot of us were either calling her a liar, we were hesitant to defend her, or we were just flat out defending Tori. And that is exactly what Bun B was talking about. But now that he came out and said, oh, you know, black women protect black men even when they're wrong. Now that Michael B. Jordan and Chance the Rapper defended Megan on Twitter, black women are now like, mm-hmm, they right, they right. So it's like a lot of us need black men to say it first before we believe or defend our fellow black woman or we have to see her cry on social media about it like she did what was that a week ago and let's be honest even her crying didn't work for a lot of us because that's why Megan felt she had to show pictures of her foot because so many of us did not believe her we are so off code black women and just so there's no misunderstanding this is not me saying that I co-sign everything that Megan does this is not me saying that I agree with everything she's gonna do in the future I have my criticisms about Megan the Stallion y'all know I just did my critique on WAP and just as a person, I think Megan still has a lot to learn. And I think she's starting to learn. You know, I, I just think... I like that she's a free spirit, but I think she's just too much of a free spirit. And I'll keep it real. I hope that all of this talk she's doing about how black women aren't protected. I hope that's not just because something happened to her personally. Because I do notice that a lot of black women, we don't speak up for other black women. But when something happens to us at the hands of black men, then it becomes, oh, we black women aren't protected. And, you know, we want other black women to defend us and protect us. Then we go right back to caping for black men and not caring about the well-being or the the image of black women we saw that with Ari Lennox you know we caped for Ari Lennox when black men were attacking her but then you know she was right back to caping for black men so I'm not gonna lie after something like that happens you are as a black woman you know especially a black woman with a platform like mine you are a little bit hesitant when it comes to caping for black women and I do question if Megan will do what Ari did I'm not even gonna lie but regardless of all of that I still believe Megan I believed her from the very beginning and I'm still going to stay on code and I'm not gonna cape for Tori or question Megan's story that is code black women and I'm gonna keep saying it but black women, we need to learn how to respond according to the situation like everyone else does. Think about who it benefits if you come out against a black woman who got shot by a black man. If you call her a liar and you publicly question her story and you publicly side with the man that she says shot her. Think about what that does to you as a black woman and how that can affect how people respond to you in the future if something happens to you. And I know some black women, you don't think that how you respond to stuff like this will affect you and will affect your image. And you don't think it, it's going to affect how people treat you when something happens to you, but it does. It does, ladies. Sorry to break it to you. People already don't believe us. So how does it help our situation if you're online calling other black women liars when they get shot by black men? How does it help your situation when you refuse to quote unquote snitch on these men when they want to harm you? See, black women, we act like we don't want people to believe us. And no other group of people work against their best interests like that. Only we do that. See, black men, they will collectively throw black women clean, smooth, under the bus if it means that their reputation and their image is protected. They will do everything it takes to make a black man look innocent when they do something wrong. They may not necessarily agree with the black man in question. They may not agree with his behavior, but they stay on code when it's time to support him. When something foul happens to a black man that did something wrong, oh, they are on code. They don't bring up his, um, his bad judgment. They don't bring up who he's dating. They don't talk about how he tro chose the wrong woman. They don't talk about his bad decisions that led up to him getting shot by the police or whatever happens to him. Why don't they do that? Because the police were in the wrong. Now, should Megan choose better men and make better decisions? Absolutely. But that's not the time to have this conversation. Conversation. What's more important right now is that this short man complex having Negro shot her in the foot. That is what's most important right now. If Megan was not putting Tori's life in danger, which according to her, she wasn't, they were arguing and she tried to walk away and he shot her. So if that's what happened, then there's no justification for his actions. And I'm going to take her word on the events that took place because we always take the word of black men when something happens to them. We don't have to know all the facts. And listen, I just want to say for the record, if a black man ever does something to me or tries to do something to me, I'm calling the police. 
I'm snitching the whole nine. And see, another way black women need to stay on code is dropping this no snitch policy. If you're scared about what's going to happen to you when the police gets there, you need to cry, turn on the waterworks, hyperventilate, shake, appear to be as helpless and distraught as possible to increase the chances of being believed. You're going to need to turn off the strong black woman warrior princess facade, you know, when that happens. You need to go into full performance mode, just like Karen does, if need be. And I'm not saying it'll always work for a black woman, but at least give it a shot because sometimes it will. Black women need to know how to perform. See, white women have mastered this. They know how to perform. And no, I'm not white, but guess what? It's worked for me. So like I always say, black women, stop talking about what's not going to work for you because you ain't white until you've tried it. Try it first. And if you're afraid of retaliation after you call the police, you need to take the steps to protect yourself. Get out of the hood if you can. Go stay with someone, you know, where nobody's going to know where you're at. Learn to use a firearm and arm yourself. Take some self-defense classes. Get a fighter dog to protect you in your home. Black women, it's time to stop being afraid of what happens to men who are a danger to you. It's time to burn the cape. Everybody sees you caping for people that don't cape in return. Bun B sees it. Everybody sees it. That's why he said something. And you know why a lot of these men are coming out talking about hashtag protect black women? Because they see us throwing up the deuces. They see us burning the cape. That is what happens when you leave. That's what happens when you burn the cape. That is what happens when you finally put yourself first. So ladies, down in the comment section, give your advice on what you think black women should do to help them overcome this fear of calling the police on black men who harm them or quote unquote snitching on abusive black men. Let me know down in the comment section. Also, let me know what you think and I'll catch up with you in the next video.